after you make money and you get rich and all of that shit, right? Like, what really matters after that? Like, like it's boring being around mad rich people. Like, that shit is whack. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. Like, that shit is trash. Like, it's like literally like, that shit is like, a f- like whatever they advertise, you know, that shit is trash. What is the worst part about being around rich people? It's no swag. There's no energy. There's no sauce. That's like that's and he's gonna explain a little bit further in the video, but you're gonna get just get to see an example of just like what I personally have been saying for years, but a lot of people kind of like dismiss it. And the people who are quick to dismiss it are usually the quote unquote rich people themselves. But yeah, dude, a lot of rich people don't have any kind of like sauce or swag. They end up just buying everything and thinking that just because they have the most expensive stuff that it kind of gives them that sense of, I guess, culture or whatever that they're missing. But that isn't necessarily the case. You can't just buy your way to the top necessarily. Like, yeah, you can fake it, but everyone eventually will kind of know that you're kind of like, I guess, you know, like like in the skate community, they'll call you kind of like a poser. I guess that'll kind of just be like the whole aspect of it. But uh, yeah, no, it's interesting to kind of see how this all plays out like this it's interesting it's it's cool that he actually is able to witness it because a lot of like young brothers they can kind of get like used in this sort of like area of like oh we're gonna hang around the black guy because it kind of gives us a like a community appeal an urban appeal but it's cool that he's able to kind of have self-awareness it's like what kind of rich people are we talking about a lot of rich people don't got no sauce like most rich people you know like most entertainers it's sauceless. What does it mean to have sauce? That's why I feel like a lot of rich people buy art and clothes and shit. <laughs> because, like, you can buy into somebody's sauce. Mm. It's like, I'm going to get this this George Kondo because, like, he put his soul on a canvas and I lost mine. So, like, I can hang somebody <laughs> else's up. It's true, though. <laughs> For real. I know. God, fuck, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah, it's like... But he is that guy. He's exactly the guy that Ferg is talking about. It's like... He has no soul because in a sense, like, he kind of gave up his soul to kind of chase the money. To be able to have X amount of money, he's had to do some dirt along the way. Not saying that everybody had to kind of do some dirt, but for the most part, you get a lot of rich people that do some crazy, shady things out of greed, you know? And then they can't sleep at night. And then they're all weirdy-eyed and they can't sleep. And then they have all these bath scouts on the wall. (laughs) But it's like, dude, you've done so much dirt that it's like not enough art will redeem you in any kind of sense, you know? You know? But it's interesting to see this. It's kind of like how you had those like those rich British poachers and everything that came from like New England that came to like Africa to kind of do uh, like to kind of do po- like the game hunting to hit the safari and game hunt and then they they take these pictures of these massive elephant tusks and these dead lions and everything and it's like it just it became a sense of sport because they had nothing they had no culture so they're going around colonizing places and stealing people's culture to this day that is the I guess like the rich white person's kind of like stereotype is like, they'll go somewhere and just steal your culture. They'll take your yoga, they'll take your coffee, they'll take your spices and everything. But in the end, they never end up using any of it, dude. You done did so much shit for money that you like, you kind of lost yourself in it. And it's like, the best thing you could do is show show somebody else's soul. Yo, listen to this James Brown record. Like he's bearing his soul in this record, but where's yours? Do you feel does that is that the same for fashion? Once you get a ton of money, you can buy all these designer clothes, but it doesn't mean you have good style. For yeah. sure, like five sure, <laughs> six sure, <laughs> seven and eight, <laughs> ten sure. A hundred percent, dude. There would be so many times where I would like shop at thrift stores, right, and then just get everything kind of like like a dime. But like everything would be just so cheap. But then I would hang around with like some of these rich kids in the, in the different like events that I would go to, and then they'd be like, "Oh, I spent." this much on this, I spent $1,000 on this shirt and this and that. And it's like, yeah, their clothing outfit tallies up to racks, but whenever they would always see me, they'd always be like, they'd always be gassed because like I stun them. I would stun them on an outfit that costs like at most like $50 where they're bragging about, oh, I'm wearing the latest this, I'm wearing that. And it's like, okay, great. So you spent like seven Gs on your fit, but your fit's Stinks, dude. I bought all my church store. I'm stunting on you, dude. Like, th- that's the thing that people don't realize about, like, true swag when you got true style and everything. It's like, I would go to the thrift store and, like, I would go and look for, like, high fashion cuts and silhouettes. 
just because I was going to the thrift store doesn't mean I didn't have like the I had the eye. I would like I would study different kind of outfits and things that were like kind of coming up on the runway like in the last couple like two three years and then I would go to the thrift store and kind of find those silhouettes and then have them on like that's why I would still stunt on them on fifty dollars where they were end up spending like thousands you know. <laughs> Interesting. That's what people do. People they just buy. That's what I'm saying. These is the buyers. Like it's like. They're not tapped into self, so they have to buy. Mm -hmm. They just buy, 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 buy. And it's like, when you have the sauce, you don't have to buy. Because you're tapped into yourself. Yeah. You don't have to like, and buying is like a form of running. You will always mm -hmm. be running. Like, that shit's going to get tiring. Why? Because you're going to keep buying. And then people going to only keep <laughs> loving you because of something else. Because you're chasing that something else and you're wearing that something else and you're going to get tired of that fake love. So it's like, love yourself more and buy less. I needed that. Thank you for, for real? I mean, yeah, a little bit. Yes. I didn't get that energy from you. I don't know. Like, I, um, maybe it's not. Maybe my motives around, like, what I like, I hoard a little bit. But, like, I like buying, like, I like buying yeah, art that I hoard. You did get into buying art recently. I did. Wait, hold on. Like, yeah, I'm an art dude. Like, who do you collect? I mean, dude, nothing. I mean, like, oh. like, uh, I who's like, your favorite artist? I mean, like, I have, like, they could be basics. Like, I don't know. Like, I have a couple brainwash pieces, you know? Okay. Like, a little, right, like, I'm a pop contemporary guy. Okay. So, I don't know. I, like, yeah. and, and, but to your point of, like, I, I definitely have a soul. I think I'm more looking just to fill up something nice on my wall. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Everybody has a soul, but some people are not tapped into theirs. That's true. Like, you could lose your soul and then you got to find it. And you got to tap into the source to find your soul. I think I... And a lot of people don't end up finding their soul no matter what it is. Some of y'all start with that one. I swear to God, a lot of y'all niggas be starting without a damn soul out here. The things y'all niggas be doing out here, dog, crazy. You got, I, I, it just you got to just say, yeah, no, that that niggas got no soul. But some of you, you, you have it, and you, some of you do a really good job of keeping and maintaining what you have. While some of you have it and then you lose it because you let the outside influence the things that you want to do you let the outside influence your decisions and thus the more you let things outside of you influence the things that you do in the daily actions that you're going to partake in that's how you lose yourself that's how you lose your soul okay but the more you look towards yourself and you say to yourself okay what do i like what are the things that i enjoy what are the things that like that really motivate me or inspire me you know oh yeah of course you we, we still are using the external as feedback but it's more coming from inside where it's like okay like this piece is fire i like this piece whereas a lot of y'all it's like oh yo kim kardashian wore this piece so now i'm aware like i know a lot of y'all niggas out here wearing skims don't play with me dog Come on, don't play with me. Yeah, honestly, like, you know, but you can lose it and then find it again. Like, have you ever come close to maybe possibly thinking you were losing this sauce? No. no. <laughs> because when I ever, whenever I thought about anything even close to that, I understood that I had to do some soul searching. And it's like, not soul searching as far as like, I don't know what my soul is, but I had to grow. That. Yeah, it's like growing. It's just like, Oh, you still doing that? Like that was like five years ago. Like you gotta grow, and and that could be like a bunch of different things. Yeah, it's like you can be doing something doesn't mean that you're not in tune with yourself or your soul. It's just that like you yourself know that that shit ain't right because that shit is old. So when are you gonna grow up and do something different? What could be around and people? Because you could be, be lying to yourself. Yes, and that's when you, whenever you lie to yourself, it's like you fucking pushing your soul away. And that can apply to a lot of different things. People, places, yeah. work. I mean, a ton of Everything. Shit. Literally. Yeah. I mean, is, is evolving, I, I don't know if evolving is the right word, but going from ASAP Ferg to Ferg, a form of growth in, in your career? Everybody always called me Ferg, even in the mob. Like, people don't call me ASAP Ferg, where I could be like Ferg. Totally like Ferg. Like, I've always been Ferg, even in Harlem. D Ferg, Daryl Ferguson. That's my name. ASAP Ferg is something we did as a crew together. So it's always been Ferg. It's just going back to Ferg, like... Going back to basics. On a final note, I will conclude and say, yeah, 100%. As soon as you're not growing and there's no growth and progression in the things that you're doing, you ultimately start to decay and wither away like a dirty set of flowers given to you by an ex-girlfriend that you just won't throw away. And it's dead. It's dead, nigga. It's dead. But you won't throw it away, but that's all right. Because <laughs> eventually, it will stink so bad that eventually you'll have to throw it away, just like your soul.
if you're not progressing in life. Your soul will stink and miles away and people will know. People will know. People will say, who is this smelly person that just walked in the room? It's you. The man who failed to progress in life and grow and take on new challenges. All right, guys. With that video, I close today and I will say, catch me in the next one. Watch a couple more here. Do your thing. It's your boy. Peace.